Hey guys, this is Donnie from Standing Goats Rescue. We are taking a bike ride today. I've got a an encounter <clears throat> that I want to share with you guys, and I want to go to a better setting. We just we get too much noise here on this highway. I just hope this microphone works out good and you guys can hear me. This is the fourth time I've set the microphone up, so hopefully it'll be right. So just uh, enjoy the ride. We're gonna, we got a little ride ahead of us. So let's make this happen. Got my camera gear in the in my backpack, which is strapped to the bike. I hope this microphone is doing right. It's such a dangerous road come home today and we had about 20 of the goats got out so that was a little bit of a train wreck to get everybody rounded back up it was cool legs are cold goats found a, a spot under the fence that was weak enough that they could push the fence out and slide under it. And of course, it was Goomba, the great big red one with the big horns.
Yep, this is our road. This road ain't very nice. I'm gonna open my windshield. Oh, sorry about the loud noise. Nobody's coming. This little boat ramp back here. A lot of deer. They're very hard on hunting this little area. You can hunt it but it's uh, primitive weapons only. Oh, I got water all over me, dog on it. Ah, I got my crotch wet. Oh. All right, get a different gear, it's kind of hard. I filled my water cup up before I left. I didn't fill it to the top like I normally do because it always splashes out on me and it splashed out on me. Can't drink none of it right now because I got a full face helmet on. We've had a ton of rain out here. Yeah, this patch of woods right here on the left side of the road. That's where we found them structures. Um, the teepee looking things. You may see some deer on this road too. It's got a lot of game on it. But there are a lot of young, young deer, little deer and um, pigs, a pile of pigs. I really don't want to get mud all over me. Don't want to get the bike nasty either because then i got to clean it. Yeah, right up here is the, um, there's a little trail that goes back to the left. And that's where we walked in and we seen all the um, the structures and the broke trees. It was back in there and all that thick mess. The little openness right here on the left, the way we went in, right there behind that gate. Oh, my crotch is soaked. That burn it. The audio is going to be bad. I'm not going to use it, and you guys are going to see my pants when I do the video and think I sold myself. But that'll be right. I've done that before, too. And we went down that little trail that I just passed, and I uh, there's a lot of wild pigs in there. So there's not a... You don't find a lot of good deer in, in here. It's mostly swamp. But it is so pretty. Here we are. Got one truck. Maybe they're fishing, I hope. Here we're right over here and we'll take a look. This is the the creek. There goes a big owl. Wow. Well, oh, shoot, I missed it. Oh, here he comes, right there. Nope. That's not an owl. 
My bad. Okay. Hold on, motor scooter. Don't you fall down this hill now. Here we go. Here's some concrete right here. Right here. Perfect. bunch of guys come up on me to go fishing and so I'm gonna go to another area where we can do this encounter it's gonna be a little rod from here but it should be a nice rod nonetheless Sorry about that. I had to fix my helmet. Had my ear doubled up or folded over. All right. Now the battery's probably going to die in this camera, but I've got more batteries. We got a little rod ahead of us. Not much. south the direction I'm headed right now uh, for approximately 35 to 40 miles I believe then it will bring me to Panama City Beach but we're not going to go that far maybe a little more than that or maybe closer to 50 miles there should be a sign up somewhere. We're just going to run a few miles down the road and we're going to be taking a right and headed down to Choctahatchee River.
river's high, swamps are full, and there's people here, shoot. Check it out here for a minute and see what's going on. All right, guys, stand by. Hey, guys, um, I made it. I'm over on the river. I'm sitting behind the camera so you guys can watch the river. It's so pretty here. But I've got an encounter I want to share with you. In just a little bit, I'll probably post it up uh, tonight if I can. I'm going to try. I've got to find it. It's in my email, so bear with me just for a second. The signal is not good here. It's loading now. I should have I copied it and saved it. All right, I got two emails from this man. The first one, I was—I actually started the encounter at home, and the audio, I was too far from the camera, and I wasn't using the wireless microphone. And so um, you could hear it, but it just, uh, I wasn't happy with the audio. But then, uh, this was yesterday, this morning I got up and just went to check the emails and I got another one from him. The first one said to use his name, the second one said uh, to not use his name. And he gave me, um, he said not to use his last name. Uh, the first one said he didn't care, the second one said he says don't. Anyway, nonetheless, we're not using his last name. Um, I'm just going to read the email to you. I had to do a little bit of editing on it. Uh, it was it was a little hard to read. There there wasn't much for punctuation in it, and with my eyes as bad as they are, I have a hard time reading anyhow. So any anyways, enough with the nonsense. Here we go. He says, "Hey Donnie, I'm 44 and stepping into retirement soon." So I don't give a rat's butt if you use my name or not. Here's what I experienced a couple of years ago. First thing you should know, I've never had much faith in the existence of the skunk ape, Sasquatch, Bigfoot, or whatever it is. But I'm a believer now. I leased 65 acres in northwest Georgia to use for hunting, relic hunting, and arrowhead hunting six years ago. A couple of years ago, the wife and I were scanning the creek banks with metal detectors looking for Civil War artifacts. She was 60 or so yards in front of me as I bent over digging a target. As I bent over digging a target, I just pinged. My ears popped like when you're on a plane ascending to the clouds. I opened my mouth to release the pressure in my ears when a super high-pitched whistle started. It made my eardrums sting. It was so loud. I looked at my wife, and she had her head down while sweeping her white detect while sweeping her white detector over the ground back and forth, as though she didn't hear it. I assumed it was caused by the ear pressure I was experiencing, so I continued tilling up the clay with my hand spade. I found uh, I found what pinged. <clears throat> I, 
I think it's pinged, guys. It may be pinged. P-I-N-G-E-D. I found what pinged within a few seconds. An old spent bullet. I rolled it between my fingers to break up the embedded clay on it to see what marks were on it. Now, from the time my metal detector pinged to the time I stood up with the bullet in my hand was brief, as in 35 or 40 seconds. I looked up to call Darla to show her my find, but she was gone. I scanned the area where she was last standing only seconds ago, but she was not there. I started hearing a faint screaming in the distance and realized that it was Darla's voice coming from the direction of the truck. I fell into confusion over this because the truck is at the gates to the property, and that's almost a half a mile from where I was at. How in the heck did she get to the truck in less than two minutes? Then my brain reig then my brain reig reignited and I noticed that the sun was below the treetops and it was getting dark fast. We started searching for relics at 10.40 a.m. approximately. I found the bullet within the first five minutes of searching. How did that happen? I grabbed my hand spade and started towards Darla in a very panicked hysteria. Almost instantly, I heard a series of heavy footfalls coming up from behind fast. Before I could react, I was hit from behind and tackled. I rolled to my backside as fast as I could move to face my attacker. There in front of me, seven or eight feet away, was a yellow hair-covered man. He was squatted down with his feet and hands planted in the earth. Too scared to move, I tried to scream but couldn't find my voice. I couldn't get anything to come out of my mouth but a squeaky whine. This was the mythical creature I've never believed in, Bigfoot. He stared at me intensely, but not in anger. It was more of a, what the heck are you, sort of expression. A short time passed, maybe just seconds, when a voice said, bad, bad, no, very loudly but it seemed that it was only in my head, not in my ears. The Bigfoot stood up and turned in one astonishingly fast motion, then literally sprinted off into the bush, covering 50 plus yards within a couple of seconds. I scrambled to my feet and ran nonstop to the truck. When I got within sight of the gate, I could see many sets of headlights. There were three wardens and a sheriff's truck. They were gathering their gear to start a search for me. Something happened to me when my ears popped and the high-pitched whistle started. I literally vanished, according to my wife. I found the bullet in the ground, dug it up, and cleaned it with my fingers, then looked up, expecting to see my wife, who was just there ten seconds earlier. This process took all of two minutes at best. But in reality, I was missing for over six hours. Darla said that she looked back to see me on my knees digging. She took five or six steps and looked back and I was gone. For perspective, we both were within 15 feet of the creek's edge. The tree line was roughly 70 or 80 yards to our left, to our left side. Even if I were to run as fast as I could possibly run, it's impossible to get to the trees fast enough that she wouldn't have seen me. Darla thought that I may have fell into the creek and was swept away in the strong currents, so she searched and called out to me several times. She then walked back to the truck to see if I went back to get something. After walking the same path we took to the creek without finding me, she dialed emergency services. The wardens arrived and they waited until sundown before they were going to look for me. Their experiences with missing people usually ends with a person walking out of the woods just before dark. I have no problem with the way they operate, even if it means that the missing person could experience a lot of serious injuries or death while the wardens wait for sundown before they start a search. The part that screws with me is that nobody can explain what happened to my phone. Darla called me dozens of times that day when I disappeared. 
but I had zero missed calls. And the big part that bothers me is that my phone clock was over six hours off. The following day, my phone was completely finished. It wouldn't even show that it was charging when I plugged it up. I told the officials and Darla everything as I remembered it. I was informed that I experienced amnesia and walked off into the bush. The amnesia will also cause very lucid dreaming, so I dreamed that I was tackled by a Bigfoot, they said. I've never been so peed off in my life. I could have smacked those officers for saying that crap. Guys, I'm sorry. There's a lot of foul words in this. Um, Darling knows that I had this happen to me. She's seen the massive bruises on my back the next morning, including the huge handprint bruise. We let, we let the lease go last year. I'll never go back into the bush again. We still spend many days and week, many days a week treasure hunting, but we do it in open fields of crop and anywhere that has outdoor venues such as concerts. Out of the encounter I went through, I have many questions I'd love to have answered, but the main one is this, where the heck did I go? I have nothing else to add to this. That's the only crazy experience I have ever been through to date. I'll leave you alone now. Thank you for giving us this setting for sharing our encounters. There's many great channels to share our encounters with, like Steve Isdahl's channel, but this one feels like real family to me. Standing Goats Rescue is just a better setting for me personally. Donna, you are genuine and a pleasure to know. We thank you for all you do. Best regards, Stanley and Darla. I don't even know how to comment on that. Um, guys, I apologize for the stuttering and reading it. Um, there are a lot of foul words in it. And I normally I would copy the email and I'll post it into my notes and then I'll do the editing. And I didn't do that. I did the only editing I was able to do was to add periods. I copied it, but I pasted it back into an email like I was going to send it off to somebody and then I saved it in my drafts but I didn't finish doing the editing I only did the periods and I was going to go back and change the um, the curse words in it and the I don't know if the the pinged pinged thing I, I don't know if that's a word or if it's if I'm saying it wrong I apologize for that I, I have no idea but anyhow, you know, this lines up um, not so much with the big guys, but with the, the UFO encounters people have, the missing time. And so many of us have experienced missing time, whether it be uh, driving down the road, you know, walking in our backyard, in our home. Many of us, probably the majority of us out here on YouTube have experienced it in one form or the other, but can you imagine six hours? That's half a day, you know, of daylight. And for he and his wife to be out there, I, I'm guessing it was fairly clear where they were at. And he watched her and looked down for a second, looked back, and she was gone. But she went back and looked for him, and he wasn't there. So where did he go? Did she go somewhere and he didn't? Uh, I don't know. I emailed him and asked him, you know, what if there was any other details, something that maybe he didn't mention because it was insignificant. And he said that what he wrote is all that he remembers. He said that's how it happened. He doesn't have memory issues uh, for that day. His issues are the phone showing the same amount of time that he was actually missing and then the phone just uh, completely died on him that's crazy guys I apologize about the background noise I am near a boat ramp and there are a lot of people as soon as I got set up people pulled up on boats trying to get boats out of the water and there's some people fishing down the bank the first spot I went to I was not able 
um, to do anything there. I pulled up, got my gear out, and three kids walked up with fishing poles, and then a man pulled up, backed his truck up beside me, and started playing the radio really loud. And so I wasn't able to do it there, so I moved over to this spot. But I'm going to get set up in a little different spot right here. I do have an important uh, prayer request that i got to get out. See you guys stand by. I love you all. God bless you. Until next time, be safe. Let you get a look at where we're at before I stop the camera. This is Holmes Creek, where it dumps into the Choctaw River. It's a beautiful area. Absolutely beautiful. Alright guys, I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.